The year was 1890, and America was in uproar. The public had begun to grow hostile towards large corporations such as Standard Oil and the American Railway Union. The reason? These companies had begun to unfairly monopolize their industries, leading to what consumers felt was exorbitantly high prices on basic necessities. It didn't take long for this outcry to reach the ears of the country, the people who could do something about it, the government. The result of this would be something that would define the history of America's economics. Senator John Sherman of Ohio felt the need to do something about this for the people. Chairman of the Senate Finance Committee and Secretary of the Treasury under Hayes' presidency, he not only had the experience, but also the power to help his constituents, Americans. Soon, his work was done, and he had devised an answer to the problem of trusts. On April 8, 1890, the bill was brought before the Senate and passed with astounding success, with a vote of 51 for it and only one against it, reaching the requirement of unanimous consent. As if that wasn't unanimous enough, when it reached the House, it was passed with a vote of 242 votes for it and zero against it, making it one of the least contested bills in the history of the United States. Finally, the Sherman Antitrust Act would make its way onto the President's desk, where it was signed on July 2nd, 1890, making its total journey time an astoundingly quick 85 days. The Sherman Antitrust Act prohibited anti-competitive agreements from being made, and unilateral conduct that would monopolize and or attempt to monopolize the relevant market. This would allow Congress to exercise all the power it possessed, to put it in the exact terms used. The penalty for violation of this act under federal jurisdiction was a fine of $5,000 and one year in jail. $5,000 in today's currency would be $160,000. Despite not seeming like a lot, the rest of the repercussions would hurt much more. The Sherman Antitrust Act would allow any company suffering losses to sue the offending companies for three times the losses that they believe they suffered, as well as the offenders facing the punishment from the government. But this victory over monopolies did not last long. Only five years after the passing of the act, in the United States v. E.C. Knight Company, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of E.C. Knight Company, dismantling the act in the process. Despite this, it would later be temporarily re revived during the trust-busting of President Theodore Roosevelt, during which the government would dissolve the Northern Securities Company in 1901. After this, President Taft would use the act against the Standard Oil Company and the American Tobacco Company. Although this would be the last usage of the act in its original sense, it would effectively be replaced by the Clayton Antitrust Act in 1914 and laid to rest.